Hi, you're listening to Redneck Theology, a short program providing a common sense look at Christianity. I'm your host, Bill Witte. Questions or comments may be emailed to redneckTheology at gmail.com. Now, on with the broadcast. God hates. Yes, I, I know that's not a statement or topic you hear very often. The immediate reaction of some right now is disbelief. How could I say such a thing? God is love. The Bible says so. The Christian message is based on love, God's love. Yet it remains true, God does hate. The Bible contains a list of things he hates, and in its overall context we find many things, and perhaps even people, that fall under the definition of that list. People, you ask? I thought God loved everyone. How could anyone ever say God hated a person? Who could fall into that category? Okay, now hang on to your hats. One such person could even be a well-known, respected, so-called prophet, a fellow named Mohammed. Okay, now before I continue, I believe it's important to note this podcast is being posted on the eve of a decision which may, in the future, prevent people like myself and other groups from posting certain truths, facts, and opinions that some religious and political organizations disagree with. See, for those of you that aren't in the United States, the leader of our country, the United States of America, is scheduled to soon leave office as we plan to elect a new president. In the last days of his reign, he's scampering to accomplish several things that he wants to see done without the general populace having an opportunity to voice their desire. Among those items is his desire to take the controlling oversight of the Internet away from the United States. If he's allowed to do that, this may be the start of a dwindling number of messages available to the world via the Internet addressing certain groups or issues that certain groups might find offensive. So, I will post this while it's still allowed in order for it to be available however long is possible if such changes to the internet do take place. Okay, now, back to the general gist of the podcast. How could I dare say someone held in reverence by many across the globe and touted as a great prophet could be hated of God? Let's start with a look at the list of things that God hates. You can find it in the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, and verses 16 through 19. It says, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Not only does the Bible say God hates these seven things, but they are an abomination to him. That means they're not only hated, but they're disgusting to him. We might be able to say, well, it's it's only the actions that God hates, except for the fact that the last item specifies he. It makes it personal. It says he that soweth discord among the brethren as opposed to the act of just sowing discord. Now to start with, if we believe the Bible, then we must believe only one true God exists. He reveals himself to us throughout the Bible, and he is not Allah. He identifies himself as I am. Muhammad supposedly speaks for Allah and looks to him as the one true God. It's been stated that, you know, There is only one God, it's Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. Well, he starts out as a false witness speaking lies since the Bible doesn't support that belief. He came on the scene long after Jesus had laid down the foundational teachings of the church and how to go about spreading his teachings. And the church did that. They went about spreading it and still today spread his teachings. He was to have been a prophet or spokesman 
for the one that he looked to as the only true God, Allah. I'm talking about Muhammad there. Now, spreading this false doctrine of a false God promoted strife between those accepting his lies and the followers of Christ. In short, he sowed discord among the brethren. Now add to that the many doctrines of the unholy Quran and their propagation and all seven of these things that God hates are visibly present. Okay, does this mean God hates those practicing his religion? Some. That's where people have a problem understanding how God can be love. The Bible says God is love. And they, they don't quite understand. How can he be love, is loving, and still can hate? History abounds with examples of individuals and groups who hated each other, yet later loved one another. Most of us know of someone who experienced such a transition in their own life. Now, although it isn't as extreme as we may have experienced, something similar in our own feelings towards uh, an inanimate object might exist. I mean, for example, I hated asparagus as a child. Just smelling it, looking at it, either one could make me gag, would actually induce vomiting. Flash forward to adulthood, for many years now, I have loved it. Yes, I know, I know it's not quite the same as relating to people, but the principle remains the same. You see, we can change. God loves mankind, his creation. He loves man so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to reconcile us to him. One of the definitions of reconcile is to restore to friendship or harmony. Now, Jesus said in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 6 and verse 37, that he wouldn't cast out any who came to him. God does truly love his creation, you and me, mankind. He provides an avenue to accept the love of God and be loved of God personally, individually. People can move from being a loved creation, which exists as a hated person. People who fit the definition of someone that God hates can choose to be loved by him. An oversimplification might provide the easiest way to illustrate this. You can be uh, you know, what, what we call a, a dog person. You know, you love dogs. They can be your favorite of all animals. But, you know, there's this one pesky canine that runs wild in the neighborhood. It has become feral. It's returned to the wild. It's become vicious. It's territorial. It's dangerous. You've come to hate that one, even though you love dogs in general. Well, then the unbelievable happens. Somebody actually catches that mongrel. Now, you would have never thought it possible, but <laughs> they tame it, befriend it, train it. And it actually turns out to become a perfect example of all the best qualities of canine perfection. One day it licks your hand and gives you that look that just pierces deep in your heart. It says as much as a dog can, it says, I'm sorry for the past. I want a right relationship. It awakens that love in your heart to extend to this former enemy. Well, God is waiting for us to give that indication we want forgiven. It doesn't matter if we participated in one of the actions God hates or were a person sowing discord among the brethren. He waits for us to turn to him. It's a matter of making a choice and acting upon it. Are you willing to turn from things that displease God, from things he hates? Are you willing to turn from doing those things? He tells us through the Bible in the first epistle to John, chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We might not like the word sin, but we must admit to it. The next verse goes on to say, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. In other words, to not admit we have sinned, or to say that we haven't sinned, 
is the same as calling God a liar. He is willing to forgive us and clean us from all the guilt of the past. He's also willing to give us a reprieve from the punishment we deserve by cleansing us from all wrong. If we will accept Jesus' death on the cross as the payment for our sins and turn to God, He will save us from that punishment. We can experience the love that God has for mankind and we can experience it personally. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you'd like to turn to God, accept his love and forgiveness, then you can pray out loud with me right now, wherever you are. It's okay to repeat these words after me as long as you mean them in your heart. So let's pray. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner. I am asking you to forgive all my sins. I'm sorry for them and am willing to turn away from sin. I want Jesus to be my Lord, my boss. I believe he paid the penalty for my sins by suffering and his death. I believe you raised him from the dead as proof of victory over sin and death. With your help, I will stop sinning and live according to your word, the Bible. Thank you for hearing me and saving me just now. Amen. The next step is tell everybody you can what just happened, that you became a true Christian. If they'd like to do the same, you can even lead them in a prayer similar to the one you just prayed. Take time daily to talk to God and listen to Him. That's really what prayer is. It's not reading a monologue that someone wrote. It's not giving God a, a laundry list of things that you want. God is real and alive. Talk with Him. One of the ways you'll find Him talking to you will be through the Bible. Read some portion of it daily. It doesn't really matter how much. Read as much as you can, but read it daily. Make it a habit. And before you do, ask Him to speak to you through it. Ask Him to help you understand it. I always suggest starting with the book of John. And believe it or not, the best place to go after you read all of the book of John is to go back and start over with the book of John. You'll be amazed the second time, perhaps even more than you were the first. Find a group of Christians that you can worship with, that you can go to Sunday school with. Get involved in Bible studies and a group that you can learn from. Most important, Hang in there. You'll make mistakes. You'll fail at times. But you can always start over, get it right, and succeed. You'll know the true love of God and even find ways to communicate His love to those doing things that God hates. That's our program for today. I'm Bill Witte thanking you for listening to Redneck Theology. Your questions or comments may be emailed to redneckthology at gmail.com. Please join me again next time for more Redneck Theology.